And for more on China-U.S. relations, I'm joined by current affairs commentator Einar Tangen. He is live for us in Beijing. Einar, let's start with that first phone call. President Xi told Trump that cooperation is the only correct choice. Is this setting the tone for this new phase of the China-U.S. relationship? Well, Elaine, that has yet to be seen. Uh, as, as was discussed, Peter Navarro and a number of China hawks are very, very prominent in terms of the Trump administration. Everybody is waiting to see who his team is and what policy directions they go. But I think the key uh, uh, indice is transactional. This is a person who follows the money, follows the deal. So uh, it's not clear where he'll be militarily. But I wouldn't be surprised if this, he, this resurrection of this peace through strength, which was a Reagan-era type of uh, policy and slogan, is not brought back. You know, Trump has uh, said that he is all about the art of the deal. He's a deal maker. You were with us on election night. Uh, but Trump has also pledged one of the strongest um, things, uh, strongest relationships, that he's also promised other things regarding trade and climate with China. What is your take? And, and what do you think could happen here? Well, you'll note that uh, President Xi was a little bit late in, in congratulating uh, Donald Trump and his uh, election. I think there's a lot of cautions. People, uh, people were not expecting this. They're trying to figure out exactly what the metrics are going to be for this new uh, administration, how he's going to do on it. I think everybody's getting used to the idea that it is going to be very transactional, that he's going to approach things, not, not on ideology, but as I said, following the money. He's going to try to appear as the master negotiator, as somebody who's able to bring things home to the USA, but that's not going to be ideological. It's not going to, it's going to throw out the old playbook that's been going along for some time. I mean, this pivot to Asia, this kind of global uh, consensus. I don't think he's interested. I think he wants to make deals. Based on what he has said so far, could Trump's domestic and foreign policies actually benefit China and its standing in the world? Well, there are a couple of scenarios. First off, internationally, if he does pull uh, this isolationist car a card, it's going to create a massive vacuum. And into that, uh, a stable, expanding China, especially with its regional economic policies, will look very attractive. You've already seen uh, more overtures from allies that had been traditionally in the U.S. sphere, uh, both the Philippines and Malaysia, have had some sort of kind of rapprochement uh, with Beijing. So that could be one thing. In terms of economics, it's not the threat that, yes, China and the U.S. have a major uh, economic um, relationship, but any moves by the U.S. could actually benefit Europe because China is not, contrary to everyone's belief, the U.S. main competitor. It's the EU. The EU produces everything that the U.S. Uh, produces, and they would be moving in to fill the vacuum if there was, in fact, any kind of trade war. What would you say are China's biggest concerns when it comes to Donald Trump? It seems in the last few years, uh, U.S. and China have made a lot of progress, uh, specifically the climate change agreement. Uh, President Xi Jinping, Barack Obama had a relationship. They had been working on that. And now it's back to square one. Well, no one really knows. He's a kind of climate denier. He has uh, said on a number of occasions, and in, in one particular, he said that China kind of invented this. Um, it's kind of a, a odd idea. What place will science play in terms of, of Trump? Uh, he's very quick in terms of forming opinions and very quick on changing them. So it's not clear what the realities are. Obviously, everybody understands that he was not prepared to win. Uh, he did not think that it was going to happen. And the reason you can understand this is he did not have a team or a set of concrete policies in place. It's going to be very reactional, but it could be a, a very big plus uh, for China if they are able to engage him in the kind of way where he sees himself creating small victories for the U.S.